Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, we went through the master's course. Yeah. But then I think for me, what that, uh, as I said, I, I became the person I am mm. during that course because mm. that's when I became outspoken about a lot of things. Mm. Um, the the little voice I said the little voice is always there. All of us have a little voice somewhere, mm. and we suppress it and we say, mm. no, sh- you know, mm. what if, what if, what mm. are they going to think? What will mm. they say? Mm. Um, you know, you might offend, but you you keep it. Then you go to bed and you keep replaying yeah. the things you could have said and how brave you could have been. Mm. So for me, mm. <laughs> opening my mouth for the first time yeah. was so liberating, and I never yeah. I never looked back. Mm. Really, that was um, a watershed mm. moment for mm. me as mm. a person. Mm never looked back mm. and mm. so during the master's course we had mm. several moments several moments <laughs> i remember telling off a lecture and said i i don't know what this lecture was about it was not useful at all <laughs> so people expected me that if there's something wrong i'm going to say something you you are the I'm voice going, I'm, I'm going to say something about it <laughs> yeah um that was uh goodness this was so did you get did you get branded some way i don't know maybe I, I don't know, probably, <laughs> probably. But um, I think uh, the people I went with to medical school, yeah. they wouldn't have recognized that, that me. Person. They wouldn't have recognized me. And so I think even when people meet me now, they are surprised. Those who last knew me in medical school, I think they get surprised They're like, at it's... what happened. <laughs> yeah, because I think it's like night and day. As you said, you have this voice that is yeah. there and you, mm. you, you, mm. you suppress it and then you know, you go and play it mm. over and over mm. what you could have said, what you should have said. Mm. And then somehow, mm. okay, you forget it and, and you move on. Mm. So that was... Um, but <clears throat> it also makes a lot of sense because if you look back at the girl or at the young lady who was an intern, who is seeing all these systemic issues that she can't do anything much about and mm. she feels sort of helpless. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's just... You know, she's a little cog in the wheel, but she's <laughs> she's wondering, what do I do? You know, yeah. what do I now do? Um, and she's feeling her voice is not strong enough. Um, so um, she's feeling she can't express, she can't do, she's just being part of the process. Yeah. Now she's getting stronger, <laughs> she's becoming more, more and more powerful. She's uh, going through, she's learning a lot, you know, through uh, through the work itself, but also her own voices are rising and becoming very, very um, a, a legitimate voice, you know, through through the work itself, through labor yeah. and through experience through and exper- through hard yeah. work and through yeah. legitimacy and integrity. So it is, it is, yeah. it is at the right time. I think it was it, at the right time. Yeah, it came at and the right time. Maybe if it had come out earlier, would have, <coughs> would have been done internship for two years and they would have broken yeah, yeah. or it would <laughs> yeah yeah it would have been premature <clears throat> maybe or um it would have been coming out with anger or um yeah because at times the uh advocacy is also really <laughs> strange because mm. if it comes out wrong or incorrect mm. or at the inappropriate time then it can be yeah it can be dangerous or it can be like screaming in the void yeah. really because um i think you have to pick and choose which battles to fight to fight because yeah. like trying to change a system as an intern yeah okay the system will just swallow you up and spit you out yeah and maybe you have more to lose yeah but then because as i said you have no power you have no influence you don't have really legitimacy you're still considered as a student you are like really at the bottom of the pecking order so mm. It, you can you can try. I'm, I'm sure there are people that do, but maybe you need a community. If there's a community, then yes. But as a person, yeah. But this is a class of 25. This so. is here. Yeah, you're with your peers. You're yes. in your late 20s. There's been. Yeah. You, you have. And it's a new environment. First, <coughs> first lex, first lesson of the master's course. That is so, so amazing. Yeah, and yeah. and I think it's something also which I've I've recognized that if I'm going into a new environment, new position, new thing, like. Set the agenda. Set the agenda right yeah. right from the start. Yeah. Don't wait to yeah. get into the system exactly. and then try to see what you can yeah. what you can and you can't do. Yeah. Like the at, right from the outset. Yeah. 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 Make it known that this is what Yeah, because I they didn't know for. me before yeah. as the mouse. Yeah. So I'm a new person as far as they are concerned. <laughs> they might think that this has been me all this time. Yeah. And um, and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I remember another another incident where there was a lecturer who came and there was a module on infectious diseases <clears throat> for a week. 
this person was the module convener. And then the last lecture was on malaria. So, okay, malaria. I'm in a master's course. I've lived malaria, I've had malaria, I've, I've saved malaria lives. Mm. So I expect my knowledge to be enriched by other things, by other perspectives about malaria. And then we get into this lecture and this person had a collection of photographs from different parts of the world of his travels around the world as a malaria expert. Oh, here I was in Vietnam. And then here there was, I don't know, he, this one I was on Burkina Faso, this one I was in Uganda. Picture after picture after picture after picture. So I sat, looked at this guy and the guy went on. He was the module convener. We've, we had finished like all the other infectious disease lectures. And this guy, he, he goes on. He doesn't even ask himself, what am I doing? So he finishes, he said, okay, any comments? We look around him. <laughs> when I put my hand up, people are like, okay, there she goes. Then I said, what was that about? <laughs> like, what was this about? These are just a collection of pictures of your travels. What does it have to do with malaria? <laughs> <coughs> Fire. Then the guy is like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, that's actually, that's a good question. I apologize. I thought I had loaded uh, the presentation, but I found I had loaded the wrong presentation. This, I think, the presentation I've used in, a, in another forum. That I apologize. I, re I realized that, uh, you know, some of you may not have received what you wanted in this kind of lecture. I said, I really, nothing. Malaria, malaria is like such a big thing. So we expected something that is going to change the way we look at the world in the lens with the malaria lens. But this is, it says, yeah, I am so sorry. And in fact, if I don't know what, we can do a remedial course and I, I'll have, I have to see whether I can find time. But for me, that feeling like I could talk to a lecturer. Yeah. <clears throat> but the thing about that is that it then consequently makes you and others also get value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, value for yeah. your value so, for money. <laughs> so those um uh, like five year five years before that maybe I would never have done that. Yeah, but very uh, nice, very nice. Yeah. Uh, so uh, quite a meaningful experience <laughs> then for you in Germany. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very life changing. Very life changing. Come to your own person. Very expressive. Yeah. Um, and uh, so did did you stay just a year or? Yes, I the masters was one year, mm -hmm. so I. Um, I finished mm -hmm. and then by the time I was doing my master's like halfway I had moved from pediatrician okay I had now uh, said you had known no yes I had said okay now I think WHO it's WHO the UN UNICEF that yeah. kind of that's my that's where I want to go mm. and um, then something happened <laughs> we went to Geneva Mm -hmm. as part of the master's course mm -hmm. you know so we we spent i think three days there so they would take you here you meet people you talk they take you around and they tell you how WHO works and with, by the time i'd left i was like no this is not this is not for me you're not doing this this is not for me mm -hmm. so then i was still saying okay i'll go back to mbarara mm -hmm. after my master's they're already writing me letters because i was on study leave uh, you know when you come uh, we are considering you for the head of department now, the Department of Community Health. The person had left had moved on and become like a dean or something. So like, yeah, when are you coming back? When is your master's ending? So reading Barara was in my mm. radar. Like mm -hmm. I was finished my master's, I go back. Mm. <clears throat> Could become a lecturer and then, I don't know, head of department or something like that. Then um, just before the master's ended, in the same department, they started a PhD program. Mm. And um, I wasn't even aware about that PhD program. And that's where my future husband comes in. <laughs> because... <laughs>